Welcome grade 12 students, whether LS or GS sections. We're going to start with an introductory chapter for math-based physics. The topics that we're going to cover in this chapter are physics versus math-based physics, units, solving equations, derivatives and antiderivatives, studying graphs, whether primary and dependent variables, interpreting tangents and areas, then we're going to move to vectors. If you find yourselves capable of understanding all of these, then this chapter is simply an additional chapter. It's not as important as what's going to come after it. As a start, let us distinguish between physics and math-based physics. As you all know, our curriculum relies mostly on the math calculation and mathematical approach of physical ideas. So you notice that we have a lot of mathematical derivations, but a little bit of math concept. So to distinguish between these two, we have to know that physics studies the why and the how things function, while math-based physics is more concerned with deriving rules and equations and how to use them to develop and calculate results. For instance, consider Angry Birds game, a simple game and a perfect time killer. With mathematics, it becomes as complicated as you can see over here. Again and again, looking at the game, all you have to do is just target a certain pig in order to win. But when math is involved, a lot of equations need to be considered. How can we apply math for physics in basketball? We all know the famous player Steph Curry. He's currently playing in the NBA. And if you watch the video attached here in this uh, link, you can simply observe some nice discussion which is done about Steph Curry and his shooting strategies using mathematics and physics. We will not waste time here. If you're interested, follow the link. On the other hand, where do we apply physics in our daily lives? Here is a nice video where you can watch it on YouTube and check how physics is applied in our daily lives. Now, starting with the first section, which is units. There are seven base units corresponding to seven fundamental physical quantities that we deal with in physics and other sciences. These are length, time, mass, electric current, temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. And to be very clear about that, all you need to know is that the first three terms are extremely important in physics, then comes electric current and temperature. As for grade 12 students, you will find that the essential part or the essential units are the first four. All other units can be composed of these units and they are called compound units. They can simply be joined by multiplication or division. Some examples of compound units, we have the volume, which is length cube. The SI unit of volume is the meter cube. Speed, which is distance over time. It is a compound unit made up of length, which is expressed in meters, and time, which is expressed in seconds. Dimensional analysis. It is simply the study of units and how to use them. To convert units, we can use the unit factor method. Definitely, if you know a simpler method, go ahead and use it. Now, what is the unit factor method? It is simply a ratio of two values that are equal in value or quantity, but different in expression. How's that? One kilometer and 1,000 meters are equal, they are equivalent. So if I write the ratio one kilometer over 1,000 meter, as you can see over here, you are simply using one unit. This is the unit factor. Now, whether I use it one kilometer over 1,000 meters or 1,000 meter over one kilometer, this all goes back to what I needed uh, for. And we'll check that in an application. For example, convert the following units. I'm going to choose one unit out of these units, and you can continue with the others. For example, we have 36 kilometers per hour. 
To convert this into meters per second, which is the SI unit correspondence of kilometer, meter, and of hours, we have the second. To convert these, this is what I'm going to do. 36 multiplied by, before we multiply, 36 kilometer over hour. I need to convert two terms, the kilometer and the hour. So I open two unit factors. The first unit factor is needed to convert the kilometer to meters. So I multiply by 1,000 meter in the numerator and one kilometer in the denominator. Why is that? Simply, I can later on cancel out the kilometer and I'll be left with the meters. The second unit factor is used for the hour conversion. Since the hour is found in the denominator, so I add one hour in the numerator, I need to convert hour to seconds, so in the denominator, I just fill 3,600 or 3,600 seconds, which we know the conversion rate from hours to seconds. Again and again, hours would cancel out. Now, all that we are left with is just to calculate. 36 times 1,000 over 3,600 is simply 10 meters per second. Now, before we move on, someone might say, I already know that from kilometer to per hour to meters per second, we divide by 3.6. That would be excellent. So directly use it. So if you memorized or you know a certain factor which you can use to convert units, go ahead and use it. If not, here is a method which you can use all the time. Continuing with dimensional analysis, now we will focus more on expressing units in terms of base units. This can help us reveal some physical quantities. For example, we can consider the force. The force has the SI unit of newtons. We all know this fact. However, what is a newton in terms of base units? So a newton is an SI unit, but what is it in base, in base units? To answer that question, we just think about a certain equation involving force. Here, we have chosen F equals M times A, which we know from previous classes. If I just consider the mass alone, and acceleration alone, I know that mass is in kilogram while acceleration is in meter per second square. So one newton is one kilogram times meter per second square. So a newton, which is an SI unit, is one kilogram meter per second square, which is also SI unit, but it is more fundamental. We call it base unit. You can go ahead and try these applications. For example, in electricity, we use the term called time constant, tau equals r times c. You might see it in later chapters. This is a time quantity. Why is that? If you just analyze what r is and what c is, you can simply find out that tau is nothing but a, a time quantity. Check it, and if you have any question, box it in the uh, comments below. That's it for the first section. Thank you for your time and we'll see you in part two.